Hello there, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hello if you're new, I'm Lily. I'm Lily Kate Makes online on Insta and everything. And I'm a knitwear designer based in Lancashire in the UK. So if you aren't new here, you may realize that this is a different background to previous videos. And that is because I am in a different house. My, my first house, exciting, hence all the little things on the wall. Um, still a work in progress, but I have just filmed another video with a house tour talking all about that, um, that I'm going to put up as a separate video. So if you're just here for the knitting, this is the video. If you want to see a nosy around the house as well, go watch the other video. So, and apologies if I'm kind of moving around. I'm trying to figure out the best filming spot in here. This is actually seven weeks in, the first time I've sat down to film podcast and this is the best I can do right now I think um in terms of fitting things in like hopefully I'm in focus hopefully everything's all right but apologies if it's not perfect just still working on it so anyway today's topic is knitting not house so I'll get back into that because I have done plenty of knitting lately starting with what I'm wearing this is my I love it being perch on the edge there does that work should have brought Dolly. Dolly's missing. She's no, she's not missed a podcast yet, I don't think. What am I doing? Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm wearing the Calm Down Tea, which is one of my patterns from earlier this year. Summer pattern that's having a little uh, swan song right now. I'll bring it out in mid-September after last week was very much sweaters and cosy socks and just trying to get warm because it was freezing outside. Um, now suddenly it's summer again, mid-September, so who knows? Maybe this will be its last outing of this year. I don't know, but today is the perfect temperature for a cotton wool blend knitted t-shirt. So anyway, yes, this is my Calm Down Tea pattern, which is part of my Calm Down series that I think I've probably done enough of now. Um, so I have the cardigan, the sweater, the t-shirt and the cami that are all kind of in the same... I would say they're like, I'd like to think of it as elevated basics, kind of. I feel like that's what a fashion YouTuber would call them, or at least I'd like to think so. Um, simple items with really nice finishing touches and a nice casual but relaxed but not oversized fit. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm wearing. Passing available in all the usual places if you are interested in that. We have seen that before, so I will move on to something that I haven't, I haven't shown on YouTube in its finished form anyway. My latest design, isn't the latest? My latest well, it's in testing and it's going to be coming out soon anyway. The on the dot sweater. So in my last video, this was on the needles and I think I'd, is that about the end of the yoke maybe? I, I was somewhere within the yoke anyway, um, which was a while ago now. But now it's finished and it took a few attempts. Um, I think I talked about this last time that the actual start of the yoke. I had to restart three times to get the neck just right for the kind of, I don't like it to be really wide, but I also didn't want it to be like up here. So that took a few goes. And then the actual body, once I thought, I thought it was smooth sailing. Haha, I thought, thought I was doing great knitting along through this bit. Um, and then realized that my gauge had changed more than I had expected it to from the yoke to the body. So then after knitting, Thousands of stitches had to frog it back again. Such is the way. So anyway, yeah, I used a four and a half millimeter for the yoke for this collar work. Um, in this yarn that is a 50-50 blend of mohair and wool, which I really enjoyed using. It's called just mohair and wool, I think actually, from Onion Knit. Really enjoyed that. Used a four and a half millimeter for the yoke. That was absolutely fine, made a lovely fabric, and then I thought, okay, that'll probably be like a four then for the body. It was not. A four was definitely too big, like the fabric was way looser than it was supposed to be. And it was a bit of a weird one with this yarn, actually, because I love it. I really enjoyed working with it, but I felt like it was a little bit of a wild card because it was classed as DK weight. But... I was getting my, the gauge that the pattern is based on is 19 stitches to four inches, which I would say is nearer to like a worsted weight. I would say DK, the DK is more 20 to 22. So, um, and yeah, I was using a four millimeter for the body, which normally would 
easily give me at least 19 stitches, if not more like 20, 21. But for some reason on this particular yarn, it was giving me uh, like 17. So I had to admit defeat there and decide, nope, that, that leans ripping back. And I had to use, a th I tried using a 3.5, but then that was down too small. So it was a bit of a Goldilocks porridge situation where I then had to, eventually I used a 3.75 and that gave me the exact same gauge on the body and the yoke. So I've kind of put a note in the pattern that this is, it's going to depend entirely on the knitter. Because I chatted to some of my friends about it who've also knit plenty of collar work. Some said they have to change by a full millimetre between the collar work and not. And some said they don't change at all. So appears there is no hard and fast rule and it also is going to depend on the knitter, depend on the yarn, depend on the size of the project, so many things that are going to make it difficult to actually predict so I've just put in the pattern that this may take some trial and error and you may you may have to see how it goes and you may have to frog but and I hopefully don't knit as much as I did before realising that so don't do what I did. I'm very happy with the overall item not going to wear it because I would be quite warm. Um, the pattern is coming out on the 15th of October. The test knitters have been cracking on. A couple have finished already, looking really lovely. So yeah, it's been really good to see all the different colour options and styles that people have gone for. Because obviously I just used two solid yarns in a fairly classic com colour combination, which is exactly what I wanted. But people, some people have used like a solid and a variegated or two really high contrast colours or two really low contrast colours and just all the different options are looking really nice. So keep an eye on Instagram for the test knitter photos of that and my newsletter where I will of course be sharing them when the time comes next month. Um, yeah, pattern will be coming on the 14th or 15th. I think the 15th of October, but I'll share it on Insta anyway. So that is the on the dot sweater pattern named for obvious reasons. Another project on my needles, or actually it doesn't even have any needles in it currently, but in progress that I really should just crack on with, but I've kind of been prioritizing new things, blah, 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 is a second sample of my close to me cardigan. The pattern has just come out a couple of weeks ago. I talked about my original orange sample in my previous video. But I'm just working up another version because I made a couple of tweaks to the neck shaping. So I thought oh, I probably should have one, uh, you know, with the, the tweaked version myself. All the test knits were the tweaked version. Um, so the pattern pattern's fine, but I thought I should have one myself. Test this on a few weeks. I don't even know when I cast this on, to be quite honest with you. Quite a while ago. Um, knit through the body was every intention of making the second sample by the time the pattern came out. And then... That was when life, house move, everything all got a bit hectic and I can't remember what else, what other reason there was, but I decided it wasn't, shouldn't be the top of my priority to knit a second sample of this anyway. I should be working on with new designs. So it's kind of been put on the back burner for a little while. I will pick it up at some point soon because it only has the sleeves to be done. I've done the double knit button band, which if you've knit one of those, you know that that is the sloggy section of any cardigan, but it's done. So on the needles or in the basket anyway, the second sample of my close to me cardigan using my yarn, Axis by Lily Kate, held together with a strand of fibers-based cumulus, which makes for a very cozy fabric. And I will be returning to that one soon when I need a project so it doesn't need any thinking about because I've already done half the thing. The latest project off my needles was actually cast on last year. So I think what the time, I think it was maybe October, November or so that I decided I wanted to use my yarn again, Axis by Lily Kate. Held double because I had a load of the cream and a load of the beige, because that was the original sample yarn that we had. Um I wanted to try using those held double, loved the fabric, so I started knitting a chunky sweater. With the idea that it would be something really simple, no fussy details, um, just some nice shaping, cosy, because obviously it makes quite a heavy fabric holding mustard weight double. So I, I just wanted to keep it squishy, cosy, warm, you know, all of that kind of thing. And then 
if I remember rightly, the the neck I had to redo a couple of times, the armholes. I did my classic mistake of not making the armholes deep enough and then having to rip back, you know, if I'd made it down the body, having to rip back all the way up here to start the armhole shaping later and make those deeper. And there's various things anyway that meant that a jumper that should have been a very quick knit, seven millimeter needles and effectively chunky weight yarn was not very quick. Um, and I think it got to like mid November and I was still on the body and I thought, you know what, this is just daft now. This is silly because by the time I've finished it, it's going to be end of November. Or some point in November anyway. I have to allow test knitters seven, eight weeks or thereabouts for a chunky jumper. Um, and then it'll be February. Probably or January, February by the time I put the pattern out. And then if anyone's going to knit it, then there'll be it'll be February, March by the time they're finished. And... It's just not the season for it. Obviously, I'm talking about the, the Northern Hemisphere here. I'm obviously aware that it is not the same in Australia or South America or anywhere but south of the equator, I understand. But, like, the majority of my customers are in Plum. the Northern Hemisphere, so that's what I have to consider. Um, so, yeah, rather than getting increasingly wound up with it and frustrated... And I think you can end up with a bit of a sunk cost kind of feeling of, oh, I've spent this much time on it, I need to get it out, you need to crack on with it. And you feel like you don't want to have wasted that time, but Oof. by keeping going on, you can end up just wasting more and more time. So I had to decide, right, call it quits. I remember it feeling like a weight off my shoulders when I was like, oh, I don't need to stress about this one anymore. Just put it in a project bag, put it in the cupboard, and there it stayed. For quite a while, until in the whole upheaval of moving things from one house to another, I found it and thought, ah, oh, there was that jumper, wasn't there? So, decided to reframe being uh, very late on last year's pattern. This, I'm very early for this year's autumn winter, so give me. Um, but yeah, it's now finished. Didn't didn't take that long once I got on with it, obviously, because uh, all the fussy bit was done. Currently doesn't have a name. Maybe by the time this video is up I'll have thought of one, but at present it does not. I used this shoulder shaping where all all the shaping's done at the back for to slope the shoulders, which you may have seen a few quite a few people have patterns using that these days. And I'm very particular about it. So I think that this this line along here on the back of the shoulder maybe i should just i'll i'll suffer through the warmth um show you what i'm very pinnickety about so this line on the back of the shoulder here obviously i've done in a garter rich which kind of highlights the starting point so you cast on across the back work some short rows to give a little bit of neck shaping and then this slope down here and then pick up along this edge to work the front. And I know, uh, you know, loads of people have used this construction at the moment. And I think what I don't like that sometimes happens is when this line basically gets like yanked up here because it puts a lot of strain on this top of the sleeve here and kind of causes the fabric to bunch there. And the reason that that happens is because effectively here you're creating a triangle shape and if you create that triangle by increasing along here where you have you have to increase every row to get quite a rapid you know quite a steep slope quite a rapid increase are you in focus or not i hope i am in focus yeah you have to increase quite rapidly and any time where you increase on every row a the fabric is going to get pinched because you know you're you pinching a bit of yarn from the row below and b you're forcing the short edge of a triangle if i don't know if i try and make a triangle here you're forcing this short edge here to stretch along this long edge if I, it's, this, it's my weird little triangle thing working so yeah it gets stretched along there and if you look my fingers they only reach to there so that extra is getting stretched so what happens is that because because obviously knit fabric is accommodating to a certain extent and if it's only one stitch or two maybe you might get away with it but if it's thicker what happens is that this section 
gets sort of like yanked back it pulls on itself because it just can't stretch along there or it kind of if that's here it ends up pulling up here because that's just too firm the fabric because it's been stretched along the long edge of the tri triangle the shortest edge because that is you know only the number of rows from here to here say has been dragged all the way out here so it puts a lot of strain in it and i don't like that the other way of creating that slope is by using short rows where then because you've cast on your your triangle hang on where will i need to do it so if you have your little triangle to get to this diagonal edge you're working short rows i'm really sorry if this doesn't make any sense by the way these weird gestures like it makes sense in my head but i don't think i'm particularly great at articulating it so apologies but if you're using short rows then it's the stitches that are getting stretched to become like the long edge the hypotenuse of the triangle so these stitches along here that were were originally just from here to here they're getting stretched to go along this diagonal but if you imagine a triangle that has you know one long diagonal a short side and a long side obviously going from the long to the diagonal isn't that big a leap so the knit fabric can accommodate that but if you go from the short to the diagonal it's a big stretch and it puts a lot of strain so that is something that i'm not particularly keen on the end result when it obviously just increasing on here gives you the opportunity to put some really nice details in there features um and i get why you would want to do that but it's just not i i'm not particularly a fan of the effect that it has on the structure of the garment it adds too much structure to something that doesn't need it in my opinion um Obviously, many designs that look fab fabulous like that, if that's your taste, I'm not not criticising at all, but just saying it wasn't going to be something that I wanted to knit. All this that goes on into a very simple looking jumper in the end, but hey ho. Long story short, I did the shaping with short rows, um, as as others have done, you know, it's not, I'm not saying I've reinvented the wheel there or anything. I love my short rows, I don't think there's many cases that they don't improve an item, so obviously I then had short rows here too to kind of fill in that bit of the shoulder um not shoulder the sleeve cap oh, i've got sleeves under here so it's looking a bit bulky but yeah for a relaxed oversized but not like ginormous cozy fit that was all the thought process behind it and luckily me of last year wrote down everything in a free form document which is where i do all my pattern writing because then it syncs across my iPad and my laptop and my phone. You can see it all in there. You can hand write on the iPad, put text on, put images on, put links, everything. That's definitely the app to use, free app, uh, if you're a designer or any kind of creative, to be honest, I think it's very handy. Um, but yeah, I could just access last year's free phone, pick up where I left off and crack on. And the pattern will then hopefully be out in November, which makes far more sense than March or February, whatever it was going to be last year. So onwards. My next project on the go is technically a sweater version of my close to me cardigan pattern. However, so many things have changed about it that it kind of just feels like a new pattern, to be honest. The main change being that it's at a completely different gauge. So when the test knit was underway for the cardigan, I floated the idea that, oh, well, it would kind of make sense to do a sweater version of this. And whilst the cardigan is done in like a heavy iron weight yarn on six millimeter needles, we kind of decided that um, you know, everybody agreed that the a sweater version would be better in DK weight. It might be a bit too heavy as a sweater. So obviously that meant a complete rewrite of all the, the grading numbers anyway. And I wanted to change the neckline and have changed a bit about the shoulders. So just, you know, feels very different, even though obviously the, the inspiration point was the same. So this is the close to me sweater, which as you can see, has a little detail at the front, hopefully to give it a casual sweatshirt kind of vibe. This is a bad position, isn't it? Don't mind my dodgy arm that goes all the way behind here. Um, yeah, casual sweatshirt kind of a vibe to, to this one with the little detail at the front and the shoulder short row details that feature on the cardigan. Just there. And it, well, I'm undecided actually whether it should have garter stitch cuffs and hem like the cardigan does, or now that I've introduced rib at the neck, because I tried it as without rib and it looked 
horrendous to be honest it looked awful so redid it and just added the ribbon there so now i'm wondering whether the cuffs and hem should be rib or garter oh undecided i'll i'll cross that bridge when i come to it but i'm really enjoying knitting with this the fabric it creates is so lovely so i'm using lamana yarns como tweed and premier held together and i'm calling this a dk gauge which at first I, if you'd have asked me, I'd have thought there's no way that's going to be DK. That fabric will be like cardboard if the yarn, if you're using a DK plus fluff. And I'm using a 3.75 millimeter needle. The Lamana Yarns reached out to me a few months ago, asked if I wanted to try some of their yarns, um, and offered to send me a sample of each of the yarns, and then said, reach out if you want to ever ever use any of them. Which, by the way, is my favourite way of working with any kind of brands, like it doesn't have to be sending a sample of all the yarns obviously, but sending some sort of shade cards or something like that, that then if I have an appropriate design, I will then reach out and ask to use it. That that feels like a much better way of working with brands than just having something sent to you that wasn't necessarily your choosing, which is how I kind of did things, it, you know, in, in 2020 when my Instagram was growing quite quickly and that's sort of when I started and obviously in lockdown I was sent quite a few different yarns by different brands there was a phrase where parcels were arriving all the time and then I think it differs to the traditional like oh, traditional influencer industry where people will be sent like a pair of shoes or something um and you know you'd put them on take photos wear them a bit maybe before you share them because then you just have to actually wear or look at the item or, or something. But with knitting, if you're being sent yarn, then to actually be able to promote it, you have to knit something in. And that's a lot of time that you can realise, actually, I've ended up doing doing a whole design here, spending all this time on something, um, you know, weeks of time in exchange for £60 worth of yarn that actually... That, that didn't make sense at all because I would never have chosen that yarn necessarily in the first place or maybe, maybe more than I've chosen that exact colour or something or would have ordered more balls of it or ordered two different colours or, or something like that. So anyway, it kind of dawned on me that that was not a very good way to go about it. So this is now how I, I do things and it seems to work out much better for everybody involved. Nobody sends yarn that isn't going to be used so it's not wasted or you know, never more than one ball of a yarn anyway. Um, and I don't have a load of yarn sat around that I'm feeling under pressure to use even though I didn't actually choose it um, not having to knit, spend weeks knitting something just to do Instagram um, yeah I just think it's a, it's a weird industry isn't it um, figuring out the best ways to do things but this works for me and hopefully for everybody involved that was a bit further, yeah. Side note, wasn't it? Got a bit distracted there. But anyway, all this to say, the yarn is from Lamana Yarns, who I then, of course, did reach out to say, oh, I have a design coming up that I think this would be appropriate for. Um, and they very kindly sent it to me. So the reason I realised that this yarn would be appropriate was because Kelly, who is Cocon Knits on Instagram, if you've not seen her before, Please go look at her profile because she is just like the most stylish person I've ever known. Um, she used this particular yarn combination, not quite these colours but similar, to knit this t-shirt, which is knit at a similar gauge. She tested it for me and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, that's quite an unusual, that might be quite thick. And then when I saw the sample in person, well, obviously I'd seen the photos and it, it looked fantastic as everything she makes does. And then I saw it in person when... We had our girls trip to Belgium early in the summer and realised that it, you know, it wasn't dense, it wasn't thick at all. So actually this yarn that's the Como Tweed that's labelled as a DK, I would say is more of a sport weight and held with the mohair makes a beautiful fabric. Um, so I decided to go ahead and use that because she inspired me to basically and I just want to be stylish like Kelly. Um, so... That's the combination I'm using. I'm really enjoying the tweed held with mohair. I think it just makes it, you know, a really nice subtle fabric. 
Yeah, still plenty of knitting to do on this one. I've now joined the body. I'm happy with the fate of the shoulders, the neck and everything, which is always the critical part, in my opinion. So now it's just cruise control knitting for a while. Probably when I run out of these balls of yarn, I'll probably go onto the sleeve. Then I can establish I'm happy with that. And yeah, crack on, hopefully. In, in my head, the pattern will be out at the end of November, but that relies on me getting this done pretty quick, pretty soon. This is like the constant internal dilemmas I have of, should I be going this? Should I just knit the one that I want to do now? Or should I be uh, casting on something new? And no, I can't be doing a second sample of that because this needs to go out before then. And I know it seems weird to cast on a new thing now, but this one can just be set in the background because that pattern's not going to come out sooner. Blah, blah, blah. Clearly some better uh, project management is, is needed here, but that wouldn't allow for spontaneous cast-ons. And I think if you don't allow, you know, yourself a little bit of freedom and creativity, then you can feel quite creatively stifled. So it's a funny one, balancing what makes most sense and what fuels the creativity. To the never-ending juggling act that I have not quite mustered yet, but hopefully will do in the near future. Talking of spontaneous cast-ons, I haven't actually cast this on yet, so be proud of me for that, that I exercised restraint. However, I did feel like I really had an itch to scratch and I had to I had, had to do this swatch to at least get the, the idea out of my brain and into something physical. So I originally had this idea way back earlier this year when I made a brioche stitch cardigan um, that ended up getting frogged twice, failed twice. I invested a lot of time into that for that it went nowhere. Um, it, using my yarn held together with cumulus and the, my, the general idea that I had was to combine brioche stitch and double knitting because they both sort of use the same principle of slipping every other stitch but to use the um use double knitting to create these like solid lines that could go on a raglan and I originally did this in just one color um and it was going to be a cardigan I wanted it to be a v-neck cardigan and then long story short that pattern just it just did not want to be a v-neck cardigan it the the raglan and the shaping of everything it was just incompatible with the v-neck it was not happening and no matter how much i tried to make it work it was it was just not going to work um however while i was knitting the single color version i did start thinking like no oh, no this technique actually could work really well in a two color version that normally two color brioche you have to have the the vertical lines all over the fabric that you know the slim vertical lines or that that is the nature of two color brioche stitch however by introducing some double knitting that enabled me to add a section of a solid color that then i thought that would, oh, that would be perfect on a raglan sweater and it would have happily been a raglan uh, a round yoke raglan cardigan or a round yoke raglan sweater but it just wouldn't be a v-neck so then yeah i've had, had this idea ages ago and then a few weeks ago when I moved all my lopey yarn into a basket in which it is currently, I can't even remember where it's living right now to be honest, but for a short while, whilst my living room was habitable, it was it was in a basket in front of my sofa and it was just like there looking at me. And I find that when my yarn is around me, I, I, ideas come to mind a lot more when I can, when it's just there and I pass it every day rather than like going to the cupboard and being like, that. What am I going to do today? When when you can just kind of let these things be in your presence and the ideas come naturally, I find that far more productive for me. So yeah, this this yarn was just sat there staring at me and I'd had this idea for ages and I was like, I just need to abandon all needles for, for an hour whilst I swatch this and get this idea out of my head and see if it's going to work. And it did work and I love it. So yeah, I have quite a lot of this loopy yarn. It is Plutlupi, apologies for the pronunciation, that I purchased in Iceland last year when I went to visit Anna, who is Free Your Sheep on here. She's just posted a little podcast vlog thing of our trip to Toronto. Just yeah, go go look at her. She's she's lovely. She's one of my favourite people. Um yeah, so on a trip to visit her, of course I bought plenty of Icelandic yarn. With not 
no clear idea of what it was going to be other than warm woolly sweaters of some description. And then the colours that I picked out were, to be perfectly honest, they were just the colours that were on the top of the basket that I'd stacked it all in and there was 21 skeins in there and I didn't want to be rummaging to the bottom so there wasn't an awful lot of thought behind it but actually I love the combination so this is the four that ended up being used it's real sheepy smelling this stuff um and I actually really like how it turned out so it was very unplanned that I would actually go ahead with that combination but I think I am going to so using this beigey kind of oatmeal colour I would call it as the the dominant colour throughout and then changing from the black to this maroony colour then to the solid red which is a combination I would never have looked at and thought oh yeah I want to do something like that I feel like it looks like a flag not sure what country of but it flag vibes um but actually when it's just the background really like it so i'm itching to get this on the needles but forcing myself to finish a few other things first and obviously with this yarn i don't know if you've knit with clitolope or any similar unspun yarn um it's it's quite unusual obviously you have to be very careful as you're knitting because the yarn snaps so easily and it's not something i've ever knit a whole project in before I've only done some swatching, so hopefully I'll enjoy that. I enjoyed the swatching process. Um, yeah. I'm sure it's just going to be a learning curve. It's a new type of yeah, well, it's not a new fiber, but a new yeah, a new a new type of yarn for me. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm sure, obviously, it could be just substituted for something else in a pattern anyway. But yeah, here's the the little Let's see how easily that does. Very easily. So you have to be very gentle with it. Okay, so I hope they go in between frustrating. I think that's everything I have to whittle on about today. Oh, that's if knitting. To oh, no, it's not. I tell a lie. You know something I've forgotten about. So, two new, but not quite new, patterns. The kitty cowl and the peppy scarf. I think I have actually talked about them before can't remember but anyway they were both published in the cowl was in that liner 52 weeks of accessories that came out earlier this year and the scarf was in the liner magazine number 20 again earlier this year so obviously they had the exclusive rights to those patterns for the first five or six months and then from that point on the designer is free to share them on their own platforms so as of today, these these two patterns are available in my Ravelry, Payhip and Etsy stores. Obviously still in the book if you wanted to have that, but they can be bought as individual downloads now too. A little overview of these items, which I obviously did all the work for last year, but they're kind of new to me again now. First up, the cowl, which looks quite odd like this. It looks very tall. However, the main feature of this cowl is the sheer panel across here, which you can't even really see, that was sort of the idea, that means the fabric just folds naturally at that point. It basically just creates a fold line, like how perforated paper would naturally fold along the dots. That's what happens with the cowl. So then the shape you end up with is more like this. Because then when you wear it, sits like this and keeps you back in your neck cozy which is not needed today but in a few months I'm sure it will be. So the cowl I used my yarn of oh, axis in this video. Ooh. Axis behind a licket held together with Isiga silk mohair. Isiga is like that however you say it. apologies in advance. I'm sure I get told off for that. Um held with the silk mohair throughout apart from this little bit in the middle where you just use the mohair. So obviously here I used two matching shades and then switched, used the same mohair, but then switched the worsted weight to the undyed version there. So you get them all contrast, but it all goes together nicely. Again, brioche stitch, you love a bit of brioche. Um, 
so that pattern is now available just in time for autumn it's a nice quick knit might be a nice little gift um yeah so kitty cowl that one's now available and the final items i'm sure these are the final ones this time the peppy scarf shawl wrap whatever you want to call it thing that goes around your neck that was published in Lider magazine number 20 so this one earlier this year and the design the kind of inspiration or idea behind this design was that I love the look of a silk scarf um and well I love the look of like the kind of rumple different layers how you might see different the different sides of the scarf might have different co colors and having that all round your neck I think that looks really lovely and in a silk fabric that's really really fine it's it's not a problem to have loads of layers around your neck because it's so thin however in knitted fabric i was like it, it wouldn't really translate to knitted fabric so i decided to use the elements of it that i like which was having like two tone in something a fold line crisp like triangle points on it um and use those in a shawl that hopefully wouldn't add as much bulk so the peppy Peppy scarf shawl uses two triangles laid on top of each other and both of them are asymmetric but as you can see they they don't line up so they're stacked on top of each other so that the points are offset like so um one triangle uses the same color throughout and then the other uses the contrast edging that's the same as the other color of I've spoken too many words today and they're not making sense but hopefully you can you can see what i'm getting at and then a third color is used for a three needle eye cord bind off to join them together at the end so this was the original sample that's featured in the book magazine even so this is the original sample that was featured in the book which is the the big version and i knit the sample in um Eden Cottage Yarns Keld Fingering, which is a merino linen, so it's very light and drapey. It was great for a, quite a large item. Then they shouldn't fall in, lovely. So obviously when you wear it, it kind of looks like you've got m more layers of fabric going on than you actually have. And I think she's cute. This one's quite big. And then my friend Kiliana test knit the small version in but in a similar fingering weight yarn and then that works really well as a little necktie um and then a few weeks ago my mum tried knitting the the small pattern but using a dk weight yarn and i think she's like four and a half millimeter needle or something so these are two yarns in the stash that are long discontinued um and she just used two colors and we still, sort of thought so well we'll see how big it turns out so it's it's the small, the numbers for the small version, but it came out a bit bigger because it's DK. But it, yeah, anyway, you can fit it in frame. So obviously this is a lot firmer because it's a thicker yarn. So I think this one will be really lovely in like winter, winter with my big coat, my camel coat. I think that'll be nice just around the neck there. And I really like the outliney. I love a good neat outline it's very me um so yeah looking forward to wearing that so they that kind of shows how the different sizes and different types of fabric make it behave obviously plenty of scope for mixing and matching and doing different things there different yarns contrasts textures etc but it's quite a relaxing knit once you get going use the short rows because obviously i love a good short row got stitched throughout and the pattern is now available on my usual places. So with the liner patterns on Ravelry, they prefer the main photo to stay as the book photo, which is totally understandable because they wanted to look cohesive. So if you look on my Ravelry page, obviously it won't, it'll be a bit further down and it'll have the liner image with the, the girl with the blonde hair, not me. So just if uh, any confusion of if anyone's looking for the pattern and can't find it, then that's why. So. Obviously, I'll share my images of how I'm wearing it on Instagram. And I think that actually is everything now, and I'm getting sick of the sound of my own voice. So I should shut up and then go edit this video and become even more sick of the sound of my own voice. 
Or I might sit in the sun because it is actually probably the last week of sunshine and maybe maybe I should allow myself some knitting hours with a cup of tea in my new garden. Just enjoying it. Maybe I should do that. Or maybe I've got too much to do on the list. Don't know. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Whether you've watched just this video or the house tour as well. Let me know what you'd like to see from me over the next few months in terms of knitting videos, newsletters. Oh yeah, I have a Substack newsletter now as well. Really enjoying writing that. Um, yeah, let me know and tell me what you're working on at this moment in time. What's, what's the uh, project that's bringing you the most joy right now? Let's, let's go with that question. So yeah, that's all from me.